Hey everyone, a long time ago, I made a video about generating 1D Perlin noise with Python. It became one of my most popular videos, and I was really happy about that. But then one day, I was watching a Sebastian Lag's video on procedural lane mass generation. And as I was watching, I heard something that caught me off guard. Uh, one thing to take note of with Perlin noise, however, is that at integral coordinates, we're always going to get the same value. This isn't going to pose a problem, but it is good just to be aware of it. So apparently, Perlin noise should be valued at zero at specific intervals. Looking at the results of my code, I realized that this was not the case, which meant that the noise generation algorithm that I had implemented was not actually Perlin noise. The worst part is that my video ranks pretty high for Google searches related to Perlin noise in Python, and so there were a lot of people who probably watched that video and used my code. In fact, if you are subscribed to the channel and you don't know me in real life, there's a pretty good chance that you found my channel through that video. If you're one of the folks who used my code, I just want to say that I'm really sorry about the mistake. I was very eager to share my module thinking that it would be useful to other coders, but clearly I got ahead of myself and should have double checked for accuracy. I've unlisted the video so that no one else is misled, and in this video I want to do two things. First, I want to show the correct implementation by explaining how my new code works. However, some of you will not be willing to trust me at this point, which is understandable, so the second thing I want to do is show you a new Perlin module published on PyPy.org that anyone can pip install and use right away. If you don't care about the algorithm details, skip ahead to this timestamp. However, if you do, keep watching to learn more. The new code I developed is updated on GitHub, so you can check the link in the description and download it. Anyways, let's dive in. So the objective of Perlin noise generation is to generate some smoothed out version of random noise. This means that the value at a specific point should be very close to the neighboring values. To start, we will assign every integer input to a random value and then determine the values in between based on those initial values. Let's say that I want to get the value at x equals 1.3, which is between 1 and 2, both of which are associated with a random value. We could try to linearly interpolate between the two to find the value at 1.3. Inputs closer to 1 will yield outputs closer to the value of the left side, and as you get further from 1, the output gets proportionally closer to the right side. The issue with this, however, is that a corner will form between the intervals, which is obviously not desirable in smooth noise. So to fix this, we will adjust the interpolation amount by using an ease function. This particular ease function has a derivative 0 at x equals 0 and x equals 1. This property is super useful because it will smooth out the curve at integer inputs. In the last Perlin noise video, I described the interpolation process in the exact same way. However, the part where I messed up was explaining how the values at integral coordinates were determined. Initially, I just set these to constant values, but it turns out that there's more to it. The way that it's actually done is we first randomly assign a one-dimensional gradient vector to each integer, which is essentially a random value between negative 1 and 1. Then, for a given point, we identify the distance vector starting from one side of the interval and ending at the input point, which also comes out to be a 1D vector. To get the final values used for interpolation, we get the dot product between the gradients and distance vectors on each side. This is an important detail because it means that the surrounding values at integers change as you move the input. When the input is an integer value, the distance vector from the integer is zero, which makes the dot product zero, hence why the Perlin noise function is zero at every integer. Hopefully we better understand how the algorithm works now, so let's take a look at the code. You can see in the constructor that I stored the gradients in a list. And in the valueAt method, I determine the distances in the interval and then multiply them with the gradients to get a1 and a2. These are the surrounding values that are to be used for interpolation. Before that, we determine the interpolation amount using the ease method, and then we use the result to perform linear interpolation with the lerp method. In another script, I created an instance of the Perlin class and then used matplotlib to display all the values for a range of inputs. As you can see, our code was able to generate Perlin noise successfully, so we could just stop here. However, there are some cases where you only want to continuously generate new values, in which case, you don't really care about what the previous values were. Because of that, I made it possible to delete older gradients in the list to free up memory with this discard method. The discard method also sets a lower bound under which noise values are undefined. Furthermore, since gradients were being shifted around after discarding, the valueAt method was modified to ensure that the same interval gradients were being used. 
In the same graphing script, I discarded all values below t equals 2.2 and displayed them as zero when I replotted the noise curve. You can see that everything after 2.2 is the same as the original, which indicates that this method is working properly. So that's basically how my code works and you're welcome to use it. However, before you go, I want to show you an alternative Python module for Perlin noise generation. It seems to have been published after my last video because I didn't come across it at that time. The pip installation command worked with no problems and I was able to figure out how to use it very easily. All I had to do was import the Perlin noise class, create an instance, and then use the name of the object as a function to retrieve values for any input point. I can even provide two coordinates in a list to generate 2D noise, which is something that my code cannot do. You might have noticed this octaves parameter in the constructor here. Basically, this specifies the number of gradient spaces between integers, with the default being 1. Those of you who skipped to this part of the video were probably confused by what I just said. So to put it simply, increasing the number of octaves will increase the frequency of the noise fluctuations. You could also do this manually by scaling the input point by some constant. Another thing I really like about this module is that it computes the pseudo-random gradients based on the input position via a hasher function. This means that you don't have to worry about wasting memory to store a list of gradient vectors. My module on the other hand still has this issue which is why I had to include the discard method. If I had to choose which module to use, I would strongly recommend using the one from PyPy because its API is so simple, yet it's so versatile. However, you could still download my code just to play around with it and learn more about the generation process. Hopefully this video was useful in some way. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Be sure to also drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's completely free and you can always change your mind later. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.